Welcome to another Fact of Fiction Friday. I'm Christopher McKell, the guinea pig. This is the professor, Jason Parsons. We are here to debunk fitness myths that have been staying the test of time. This week, we were talking about how fats are bad for you. We've thought about this forever. Jason, I don't get this. Why are they bad for us? Mm, the short and uh, ugly about it, they're not bad for you. Uh, this is probably the most perpetuated mythology when it comes to food. Uh, and one of the most common questions I get from people is, should I cut fats out of my diet? Are fats making me fat? Uh, and the reality is no, that's not the case. We've talked about this before, so I'll reiterate it again. Not just something I tell you, but many other people out there. In the case of our viewers, uh, let, me, let, me, let me walk you through it here. So there's no such thing as a bad food. This is something I say all the time. No food substance is bad. It's just bad quantities. So from a visual standpoint, you can see me over here, a little steak over here. Too much protein, guess what that'll do? It'll make you fat, bad. Too much carbohydrate, too many fries, that'll make you fat, too much. Too much alcohol, oh man, it tastes good, but it'll probably give you a beer belly, right? Mm -hmm. And then of course, butter down here, fats, too much fat will also have the potential to make you fat. The operative words here, Chris, too much. Just like in Goldilocks and the Three Bears, the reality is too big, too little, too hot, too cold, too much of any food substance as opposed to too little can have a bad uh, repercussion with you. So too much, yeah, you're gonna get larger, you're physically gonna be a bigger person. It's probably not gonna be the good stuff either, mm -hmm. right, it'll be the bad stuff. So too little, you have no energy, your body doesn't have the nutrition it needs to grow and operate properly, you're lethargic through the course of the day, other bad things happen. The reality is most people don't pay attention to their food they don't track it, they don't write it down, they don't use an app, whatever it is, to know what the right amount is for them on a daily basis. They just sort of willy-nilly throw things in their face and cross their fingers and hope they're getting the right amounts. And they wonder why they've got that spare tire hanging on down there. So as we can see with our fancy little picture you drew over here of calories in versus calories out, if there's too much going in of anything, you're gonna gain weight, right? And if that's not your goal, that's a bad thing. If it is your goal, hey, cool, keep doing that thing. But if it's not, which is most Americans are trying to lose weight, they need to swap that around. They need to have more calories going out in the form of activity that are going into their mouth on a daily basis, regardless of where it comes from. So the reality is, that's not the bad guy. Nor is protein, nor is carbohydrate, and heck, alcohol is not even the bad guy. In moderation, in the right amounts for you with your lifestyle and your goals, that's what's gonna work for you. Got it. Well, I had really high cholesterol, went on medication, and you know my dad passed away from a heart attack so i'm really worried about my cholesterol and supposedly fats is a big source of cholesterol so what about that part of it certainly i mean that's an issue that you have explained to me when we first met we first started talking that you had to go on medication for <clears throat> cholesterol to bring it down you had high cholesterol levels your doctor said man you gotta take this medication and it wrecked your life it was causing all kinds of problems you fell out of focus your energy was messed up and all kinds of other things were occurring in your body that you weren't happy with the truth is there's a lot of people being pushed onto medications for cholesterol that may not need to be there. I'm not a doctor, I'm not making recommendations, and I definitely didn't tell you to come off your medications, you made that choice yourself. But something a lot of people don't seem to understand is the cholesterol levels that are measured in your blood when you go to the doctor. It's comprised of two basic components. How much cholesterol your body makes on its own, which is most of it, versus how much you're getting from your diet, which is actually a very small fraction of your total cholesterol measured in your blood. So that cholesterol that you consume in the diet, it's absolutely necessary. A lot of people know this, but cholesterol is the precursor, the thing that all of your sex hormones and many other hormones in your body start from. This is the raw ingredient that creates those things. Your body has all these wonderful chemical processes that creates those sex hormones, testosterone for us boys, estrogen for the ladies out there. In an absence of enough cholesterol, you can't make the hormones that support your body's proper operation. And various different bad things happen. The energy levels go to heck. Uh, sex drive goes to garbage. That's not necessarily good for relationships and other such things. So when cholesterol got a bad name many years back, at probably the same time that fats got a bad name, back in the 70s and 80s when everything was non-fat, no fat, and fat was the bad guy because some terrible research studies came out that totally misrepresented what was going on with fats and cholesterol in our diet as it pertains to obesity and hyperlipidemia, lipidemia, which means high lipids in the blood, um, uh, diabetes, and of course, uh, obesity. So when these studies came out back then, they, they totally misrepresented what was going on and said that fat was causing this issue, and so was high cholesterol. 
It's just not the truth. We've had hundreds of studies since then that have shown the opposite to be true. Dietary cholesterol, dietary fats actually help your body function properly. You need them in your diet. Again, not an excess, not too much, just right, just right. So cholesterol's not the bad guy either, buddy. Okay. What's, what's going on over here? So oftentimes when I, I've gone through this information with my clients go, okay, so what am I supposed to do with fats? Where should I be getting fats from in my diet? Mm -hmm. What I try and do is help people have a better understanding of the sources of fats out there. So there's two basic sources. There's sort of man-made, I like to call them, and then natural sources of fats. I tend to tell people, go to natural sources, something that's been recently alive, whether it was growing on a tree, coming up out of the ground, walking around, or swimming, try and find fats that are coming from sources that have been recently alive, right? And they're more whole environments. It's things like avocados or whole eggs, including the yolk, the good part of the egg as opposed to grains and stuff that are processed and turned into things like margarine, right? I can't believe it's not butter, whatever that stuff is, but it's not <laughs> butter, what is it? Anyway, so those processed oils that they hydrogenate to turn them into firm, solid things like margarine and stuff, it's kind of bastardized, it's perverted through the mechanisms and the processing that they do inside these chemical things. Uh, it's not necessarily a good place to be. If you want fats in your diet, try and get them from natural sources. So I remember when I first started, and I was like, Jason, I need a meal plan, I need something here to help me get started. And you told me, just change out some of the carbs you're eating and start eating some more fats as far as avocados or eggs in your meals. So obviously it can't be that bad if I'm you're telling me to eat these fats, but why did we do that little transition here? Well, a couple reasons. When, when I first started working with you, you wanted me to just give you a mini plan. Here, eat this. And, and I don't do that with people. I, instead of giving people a fish to eat for a day, I tend to teach people how to fish so you can eat for your lifetime. This first little step that I gave you that I suggested you interweave into your own diet, the foods that you're already consuming, has two reasons for doing it. The reason I said to replace some of your carbohydrates, and I know you have a Cuban descent, so you love rice and beans and, and different fried breads, all kinds of wonderful, tasty, yummy things, but you're having a little too much of it. So you had excess calories, too much calories going in, right? Yep. In whatever form they were coming from, I wanted to help replace some of those carbohydrates with fat sources and protein sources. So the fats inside of avocados, the fats and proteins inside of eggs over here. The main reason being fats and proteins tend to make you feel fuller longer. So you wouldn't overeat anything because you weren't hungry all the time. That's the number one reason, the satiety factor for consuming those, right? That's, that's interesting because people think that bread is what fills you up all the time. Now, physically, if you're stuffing handfuls of bread in your face before your meal even gets here at the restaurant, yeah, sure, physically it fills you up, but we're not talking about filling you up, we're having you feel full. That's what satiety means, that big fancy word that just basically means you're not hungry, you're not starving. Uh, none of us are starving in this country, not, and I'm not from Ethiopia, I don't know about you, you said Cuban, so <laughs> you don't look Ethiopian, so we're probably not starving when we feel hungry, we might be bored, uh, and or there just happens to be food there, and like, man, that smells good, I think I'm gonna eat that. Too much is too much. So having the satiety factor come in from consuming fats and proteins was the number one reason I had you do that. Additionally, just in casual conversation, I could already tell your whole diet from our first conversation was really high on the carbohydrate side. I just trying to get some balance in there for overall macronutrient balance. So that was really why I recommended that to you in the beginning. Worked out for me too because I love eggs and I love avocados. My wife loves them both too, so it worked out for <laughs> both of us kind of going on this little journey together. Um, so, I think Jason has shown that fats aren't bad for you, nothing's bad for you, but if there's a few takeaways from this whole conversation, there's a lot of high level scientific nerd stuff they said, what are the three basic things or two or three things that you can tell them, just remember this about this talk right here. Now, key takeaways, uh, first of all, there's no such thing as bad food, just bad quantities, so too much is too much of anything, right? Cholesterol and fats are your friend, you need them in your diet, so don't be afraid of them, and find them from sources that are more recently aligned in natural whole foods, preferably. Sounds good. Thank you, Jason. Thank you for coming back, and we'll see you next week for another Factor Fix.